welcome back. I'm Ashley Miller here with another Spurs video for you. Um, today we are joined by Megan Varlman. She's another instructor in the Spurs program. She's also an assistant instructor of rhetoric here at UT and she's going to be talking with you today about how to analyze a website. Hi, I'm Megan. Um, I study in the rhetoric department here. I study rhetoric and digital media. I look at how people use digital media to create narratives about the places where they live and work. And right now the class that I'm teaching is called The Rhetoric of Going Viral. It's about internet memes and how they get popular and how they create cultural meaning. So today we're going to look at specifically the websites of political candidates. We're going to look at them as a genre, what things they have in common. And then we're going to build on the knowledge that you already have about how to do rhetorical analysis of texts and of visuals. And we're going to put those together and look at how the websites use interactive elements to build relationships with their audiences and how they work together to produce a certain ethos of the candidate in question. So we'll look at the screen now. Looking closely at candidates' websites will require you to combine your knowledge of visual rhetoric and textual rhetorical analysis, but it will also require that you consider the genre of the web page and the ways in which candidates use digital media to promote themselves to their target audiences. You've practiced rhetorical analysis on both written and visual elements of text, so today we're going to build on that knowledge by thinking about web page layout, interactive elements, and, mul and the multimedia that's built into these sites. We'll think about how these elements help the candidate create a particular ethos, communicate their primary messages, and establish a particular kind of relationship with their audience. So what visual elements are specific to websites? As a genre, websites, particularly political websites, serve particular functions. For one, they help introduce the candidate to the public. This might include supporters or people who are just learning about the candidate. So often you'll see, as you do on Mitt Romney's site, a bio button where you can read about the candidate's life on both the personal level and their political experience. You can also read about their stance on the issues. That's available on both Romney's and Obama's site. This helps voters see how these political parties have voted in the past, what kinds of things they stand for, and what their plans are for the future of the country. These websites also keep supporters updated of relevant events, such as public appearances. And they often run news feeds about things that are relevant either to that particular candidate's campaign or to their competitors' campaigns. So for instance, on Mitt Romney's site, we see that he's inviting us to join him for election night in New Hampshire. The websites also outline the candidate's positions on most issues, collect donations and voter contact information through features like Stay Informed or Donate, which you can see on both websites. So the main parts of a political website, or the common elements, are often a picture of the candidate, in this case multiple pictures, same on Romney's site, a campaign logo, in Romney's case it's this R, and in Obama's case this familiar hope symbol, the horizon. There's always a navigation bar. And most often this comes at the top of the page. You're probably used to seeing this on other types of web pages as well. And it gives you the links to the main pages on the site. In the case of these political websites, there are often action buttons. Things like donate, stay informed, get involved, and learn more. You can see these on Obama's site as well in the form of donate and volunteer, for instance. There's also the visual elements that make up the design scheme of the site. Often for political campaigns, these rely on red, white, and blue, as you might expect. But there are, there are often differences. So we can see on Obama's site the heavy reliance on blue, two shades, with accents of red. On Romney's, we see a mostly white background with a heavier reliance on a more formal blue color. In addition to the color, there are things like symbols, like the house, the stars,
They're holding shapes. Things like these circles or these bars here. And there's a verbal identity as well. So the tone of voice, for instance, in which candidates make claims or promote their message. An easy contrast here is, for instance, to collect contact information, Obama's website says, I'm in, exclamation point. Whereas Romney's site says, stay informed. You can see the difference in the tone there. The verbal identity also includes the messages themselves. So the content of what the candidate is saying in addition to the way the candidate is saying it. When you're looking at a specific candidate site, you want to think about what kinds of content get priority. So this could be what kinds of things carry the most visual weight? What kinds of things appear above the fold? In other words, without having to scroll down, what do you see first? The other thing you want to think about is what kind of relationship all of these elements create with the audience. How is the candidate trying to relate to the people that they're trying to connect with? Let's take a closer look at Mitt Romney's site first. We can see that the image of the candidate is a rather serious and posed image. It has a sort of up-and-coming hero feel to it. He's looking off into the distance looking very serious and formal. As we mentioned, he has a rather simple logo playing off of the R in his last name and a design scheme that's relatively simple as well. Mostly a white background, things are in boxes. It's a rather linear site, groups of squares. In his navigation bar, he's prioritized his bio, most likely because people won't be as familiar with Mitt Romney if, they, if he's not already in or near their state. We have issues, his stance on jobs, health care, and foreign policy, also important for new voters to know, and for people who are already supporting him to read up on. Then we have news videos, get involved, and shop for things for gear, things that, like this sweatshirt that have Romney's name or campaign messages on them. As we mentioned, at the very top here we have a stay informed button and a donate button. The element with possibly the most prominence on Romney's site in addition to his image is this message. We have a moral responsibility not to spend more than we take in. can click here to learn more about that stance. Then we have this rotating bar here which mostly includes upcoming events or news articles written about Romney in the recent past. We see a lot of phrases like this, family, faith, and country, moral responsibility, again moral responsibility, and at the bottom, Ann Romney says husband has integrity and character to be president. So we can see that he has a pretty consistent messaging strategy, relying mostly on this moral connection with a conservative audience, this shared belief in conservative values, family, faith, and country, for instance. His social networking elements appear at the bottom of his page with a repeated navigation bar and a larger version of his logo, Romney, Believe in America. Let's compare this with some of the elements on Obama's site. As we mentioned, Obama's site uses two shades of blue, a darker and a lighter, giving it a, 
a more modern look than Romney's site. He also has, instead of a purely white background, a lifestyle image, a partial image of this man's shirt, which might convey that he is among the people. He has a lot of elements on his site that support this kind of grassroots feeling. He has a link to each state so that you can read about things most pertinent to the place where you live. And he also has a groups link so that you can learn more about the issues related to the group that you most closely associate with. Farther down the page, he has a local events bar where you can type your zip code and find events near you. We mentioned that his campaign logo is probably already familiar to most people as he used the horizon element on his campaign posters in the 2008 election. It got a lot of attention for being a well-designed poster and you can see that the site reflects that sort of attention to design. Compared to Romney's site, which is more formal, slightly more simple, Obama's site takes a highly stylized approach. For instance, we see that the, box, the holding shapes look like conversation bars. And we see that these calls to action here, to volunteer, call, tweet, attend an event, for instance, has created little icons. The group of image, images that has the most prominence on Obama's site is the central image of a recent speech, the end of the war in Iraq. Surrounded by other smaller images, the president with his wife, for instance, a link to the Obama store, and the others are about issues that he thinks his audience might be interested in. There's also a link to his record, his voting record. A news link. Followed by a blog. This entry is by Eva Longoria. The president's Twitter feed. An additional commentary from supporters. Looking at the verbal identity on Obama's site, it says things like, I'm in, or the very latest, as opposed to news. So you can see that he's taking a slightly more conversational approach than the Romney campaign. The action buttons also have a lot of prominence on the site, and social media plays a larger role than on the Romney site. The number of action buttons and the placement on the site are important for understanding how the candidate wants to relate to his or her audience. We might assume that having a lot of action buttons prominently placed on the site means that the candidate wants to promote involvement, not just by contri contributions, but by establishing a sort of more a sort of connection with the audience member that they're actually involved helping the campaign. That's something that Obama's site seems to focus on, particularly with the grassroots options here. This might build a sense of com camaraderie with the campaign and help people see themselves as members of a community.